Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can make this object really easily using things like hard ops and just some good blender workflow. So I'm going to start by just modelling this on the side of a cube, so let's just S to scale that up. We'll apply the scale, I'm not going to actually intend to do anything with this, and we're going to bring in something to be as sort of beginning of this gear system or this pivot point. So I'm going to shift an A mesh and I'm going to bring in a cylinder, and then let's increase that to, I don't know, 256. And then we'll press R and rotate that on the x-axis, 90 degrees, and then we're just going to scale that up a little bit. And then we're going to S one more time and double Z to scale it on its own local z-axis. So we've got that, actually, let's just scale that up a little bit more. And this is where we're going to be doing this. Let's, there we go, something like that. So let's just start with some of the detailing. I'm going to start destructively because adding in a small ridge is probably going to give us a good point to look at. So I'm going to tab into edge mode and I'm going to shift an R and I'm going to make an edge loop and just drag it along to, let's say, there. And then control and B and we'll just bevel that to create our loop. And to extrude that out, we're just going to press Q, go to EM macro and alt click on EM macro. And that's going to allow us to either extrude that out or inwards. But either way, it doesn't break the mesh when it goes inside, so we don't have too many problems. And it does it on the direction of the normal, so everything looks quite nice. Let's deal with our ridges that are across this shape. So I'm going to come back out into object mode. I'm just going to come into side view and shift an A, and I'm again going to bring in a cylinder. It doesn't need to be as large in terms of vertices as that. I'll go with 64. That's probably a bit excessive. And then R on the x-axis again, 90. And then let's just bring that out to where we want it. So somewhere around there. I'm going to click Y so it sticks perfectly centered. And then let's S to scale that down. That's probably OK. And then let's S and ZZ again to increase that along its local Z axis. And then let's just sort of position that to the point we're happy with that. At this point, it's really easy. Again, with hard ops, there's a link to hard ops and box cutter in the description if you don't have it already. If you're serious about hard surface modeling, do get it. It honestly saves you all the time in the world. Though I will say I've got a video on how to do a radial array, which we're gonna be doing in a second, relatively quickly with geometry nodes. You just have to set it up and then save the node. But honestly, if I was you, I would just be buying hard ops and box cutter. It just makes life so much easier. I mean, literally, it's that fast. And then I just scroll up on the mouse wheel to determine how many of these copies I want. So let's go with 20, maybe a little bit more. Let's go with 24, click, and then we've got those there. And then I'm gonna select that object, shift select the object I'm gonna cut it out of, and control and minus. And then I can just press, oh, actually, you know, let's change that to exact first. And then I can press H to hide those, and we'll hide that empty that's created with it. So there we go. Now. Bear in mind that this is a non-destructive function because we've got a modifier. All we can do here is go to face mode, select there. I'm just going to I to inset that in and then do something like that and then just extrude it out just so we've got some space for where we're going to do our bit that is effectively our pivot point. Let's alt and X and mirror that across so we've got that on both sides and then we can do the same with our pivot point as well. So this is a bit that sparked up some interest when I was showing someone this online. They were just asking how to add like little bits of detail and make what should be a relatively boring bit a bit interesting. And I knocked this up really quickly, sent them a picture and they were like, well, how the hell did you do that? In the background, I'm just making a cylinder. Just, I mean, it's fairly standard. You can see the screencast keys in the bottom right. And the secret to this is just knowing the workflow of Blender and the different bits that you can do with hard ops. Because actually, this is really simple. And what's really cool about this is it's pretty much all non-destructive. So you can do what you want with it. So what we need to do is we need to set up the bit where we're going to make the, I don't know what you'd call it, cogish pattern. Basically, the little details. And actually, that's really easy to do with hard ops, mostly because it's got a specific Boolean, which is a real pain to do without hard ops. So let's just talk about how I'm going to do this. So the first thing is I want this to be exactly on this transition line, this line here. So what I'm going to do is go into edge mode, press alt and select that edge, and I'm going to press shift and S. And this is with machine tools. Your pie might look slightly different to this, but either way, you can move your origin to this edge, and that's now going to be in the center of this. And that's just going to mean that we can get this perfectly on that edge. We could do this other ways with snapping, but this will work for us. I'm going to shift an A, mesh, and I'm going to bring in a plane, which is going to be there. And then I can R, and then 90, so that we've got that exactly on that edge. And then S to scale that up. And then I can just go into face mode and E to extrude that out. So we're covering 
this part that we want to add this pattern to. I'm just gonna check the normals of this just so we can see the face orientation, no problems there. That's always worth doing when you've extruded a plane because if you extruded it, just give an idea, in the other direction, you'll see that this has all got problems. I've got mine set as yellow. Uh, you can set it as whatever color you want. Normally by default, it would be red if there's a problem and blue if there's not. So extruding it out this way doesn't cause me any problems there. I'm gonna turn that off just because it gets a little messy at points. And now this is the bit that makes this work. Now, before I do anything, I'm gonna apply the scale on these. I don't think that actually makes much of a difference, but I'll just do it anyway out of habit. And then I'm gonna select the cutter, which is gonna be this block. And then I'm gonna shift select the thing that I want to be cut or booleaned. We're not really cutting it. We're gonna do a different function. I'm gonna press Q, go to booleans, and I want an inset. So I'm gonna click that and we'll notice we've now got this inset. And before I do anything, I can fiddle around with this and change the thickness, but actually we can do that later as well. So either way, we've got that sorted and I'm gonna select off of that. Now, this is the bit that's important to understand. HardOps has turned this into two objects now. We've got our original object, the cube, and we've got this object that's been made out of, well, actually it's been made out of the cylinder, so it's called cylinder three in this instance. But the important thing is these are linked together. And what's gonna be key to this is this is controlling where this is. So for example, if I G and Y and move this across, it's gonna start changing that. In just in terms of the boundaries of where it can be. Now I'm not gonna actually do that, but it's just so we know what this is doing. But in terms of what's taking away from this cylinder, if we have a look at the Boolean, that is our cylinder three, this. So actually, this is not doing any of the Booleaning. It's just controlling where our cutter is, uh, which is then making a difference, Boolean. You'll also notice that if I've selected this, that we've got a solidify modifier on this, which allows us to come back in and control the thickness. So we can just move around this still. So I don't actually need this cube. I'm gonna H to hide it. Do not delete it. You're gonna have issues if you do. And then to get this cog pattern in, all we need to do is affect this cutter. Because at the moment, it is cutting out this section to make it smaller. If we just undo this, you can see what it's doing there. It's making an inset. So to get this cog pattern, all we need to do is remove some bits of this. Though I appreciate I've spent longer explaining it than it's actually gonna to take to do, I just think it's important that you understand it. So what I'm gonna do is shift an A, mesh, and I'm gonna bring in a cube. That's probably bigger than I want it from the top, so let's just scale that down, and then let's G and Y that out a little bit. And importantly, we're then gonna go into vertex mode, X-ray mode, and I'm gonna select those, and let's just scale that out a little bit wider. What's cool about this, as I said, it's non-destructive, so we can fiddle around with this afterwards. And I'm gonna come into side view so I can tell where everything is, and I'm gonna, once again, press Q, mesh tools, and we're gonna use a radial array, which is going in the wrong direction, so I just press X, and then X again, until it's in the correct direction, and I need to, well, bring this down in the number that it's got. Let's go with there. 10, that should be fine. And then bring it there so it is overlapping with our cutter and all the way down to the surface that we want to project it to. And at this point, all I do is select that, shift select the cutter, the cylinder, and then press control and minus with ball tools. And that is going to have removed this section of the cutter. And that means that this is now not being cut from the cylinder that's being cut into. And we've got these there where we want them. The most fun thing about it is that if I select this Q and then ever scroll and come back to this and then Q and then ever scroll again, I can select these and I can change them still. So say I want these to stick out further. Let's go into vertex mode, select those vertices, G and Y. I can bring that out a little bit further, go back into object mode and we can see that it's now coming out further. Or I can come over to my modifiers and I can change my radial array up or down. So say I only want eight of them, I can change it to be eight. I actually quite like it at 10. But I probably want this a little bit more equal. So once again, let's come into here, go into vertex mode, select all of those, S and X, make it a little bit thinner. And then there we go. So it's all non-destructive and we can even change the thickness if I come back to this, ever scroll and select the thing that's got the thickness to it. So this cylinder, I can just change that thickness to, I don't know, 0 0.4, and it's suddenly now thinner. So 
yeah, really nice, quick shape to be able to fiddle around with. And if we want something like, I don't know, some rivets on that, again, same process, shift and A, mesh, and then let's bring in, let's say, a quad sphere. Let's shrink that down to somewhere there, whatever size we want it to be. And then Q, mesh tools, radial array, X and X, and then we've got those on each of our points. How many has this got on it? So 10. Oh, and I've just realized this is coming in a slightly funny angle because of the way the orientation of the cursor is. So I'm just going to have to R and rotate that around slightly. And then let's G and Y to bring that in place. And again, I can still fiddle around with where these are using the strength of the modifier. So notice there are two modifiers that the radial ray creates. This one, which is the number, so the count, and then this one, which is the strength. So I can just bring that in a little bit until it's going to be there to be our rivets. And then once again, shift select, select each of our objects we want, shift select that, alt and X, and then let's mirror that across. And now we've got that on both sides. So really quick, very functional in terms of what we want. Everything can still be modified. And we've got an interesting level of detail to something that could be quite boring to look at otherwise. As always, if you found that useful, please do hit the like button. It's really appreciated. And if you want to support the channel further than that, either subscribe because that helps all the algorithms and all the other fun stuff, or head on over to the Patreon page like these fantastic people did. I really appreciate all the support that people have given me over the last year and a bit. I really can't express how much it means to me. It's been absolutely fantastic. I love you guys. Thank you very much. And I hope you have an awesome day.